the rookie 250 rider is the only thorn in Ricky's side. This is round number 13 of the THQ World Supercross GP in the AMA Supercross Series. Welcome to Pontiac, Michigan and the legendary Silverdome. We've been coming here since 1976 and 42 races later, we're ready to roll it out again. This is the THQ World Supercross GP and the AMA Supercross Series. Hello everybody, Todd Harris along with the champ, David Bailey. Well, the last two weeks in the 250 class, it has been the Australian from down under, Chad Reed, and he looks very comfortable today. He does, but I think Ricky Carmichael looked just a touch sharper and he's a little bit faster in practice. However, I don't think that matters to Chad. He, he's so relaxed out there. He doesn't really care if he has the fastest lap time in practice. If he has it, great. If not, whatever. He just, you see him around the pits, and you now he just seems like he's in a great mood, like it's not even that big of a deal out there. And if you can ride relaxed like that, you can usually ride at your best. Meanwhile, Ricky Carmichael last week in Houston got a decent start, but that first corner really put him in last place. Give him credit, though, David. He got all the way back to second. Well, it was all Hondas up there on the inside, but one of his teammates, Preston, he didn't mean to, but he took Ricky down. Ricky had to come from last. Great ride, but it's not what he wants. I think he's very motivated after two losses to come here tonight and get another win. As we take a look at the Honda Series standings, it's Carmichael Reed, Villeman Ferry, and Ezra Lusk in fifth place. Ezra Lusk, the guy we thought we'd see more of, especially after his win in Phoenix at stop number two. Well, that was impressive. The way he came from behind to pass Chad at the end of the heat race, late in the main event to get the win, you could see how pumped he was. I thought that would really ignite him and, and give him a great season, but injuries have just taken out so many of the top riders, and now Lusk joins that group. Too bad. As we take a look at our THQ World Supercross GP standings. It's Reed, Villeman, and Ferry, and now Heath Voss has moved into fourth place, a great position for him. We also want to keep an eye on our top privateers, Ryan Clark and Keith Johnson, and thanks to the good folks at U.S. Smokeless Tobacco, Nissan, and Clear Channel, there's a lot of money and a truck on the line for our top privateer at the end of the year. Well, there's an area on the course this week. It's called the Rhythm Buster. It is going to wreak havoc on the riders. So we sent out Cameron Steele for this report. Well, whoops, it's Supercross are gnarly. Tonight here in Pontiac, they're no different. It's super sketchy getting through them, but they threw a little bit of a curveball. I know you guys got your own name for this thing, but I call it the death double. Go through the whoops, and then you got to try to go off the face and over this double jump. You might also call it the jump of broken dreams or broken wrists, because that's what might happen if you come up short. This is going to be the key to winning here tonight. Can you get over it every time? I'm not sure. It looks scary to me. And Well, Supercross racers aren't really the brightest guys in the world, or they wouldn't be jumping gaps like this, would they? Thank you, Cameron. David, let's take a look at this Pontiac track. This is the THQ track map. A little more than 100-yard dash at the first corner are going to be a big advantage for the guys in the four strokes. Make a left, you go over a little pyramid section, and a rhythm up on a plateau back off before you hit the big air off the first triple. When you come out of that left, the whoop section has a double at the end, so if you don't get through those fast enough, no double. Make a right through more triples and doubles. If you make a left and go across the starting line, no bridge there tonight. They've made a change at the last minute to make the starting line longer. Another triple, more rhythms. You run the perimeter of the stadium through all sorts of different options, doubles and triples, but you gotta make up all your time here as you head to the finish line, John. 250, heat number one from the Silver Dome is on the line. The bikes are fired up. That is the man who has won the last two weeks, Chad Reed. And uh, I think that video was awfully telling. Chad Reed laughing, very loose, very comfortable. He said, during this week, what are you going to do? You go back, work out, train? No, I'm going to get a bit of golf in, mate. He has <laughs> classic Chad Reed. Yeah, it's hard to say if he was really trying to mess with Ricky or not, but he has been playing a lot of golf. He lives on a golf course, Fonseca. A couple of thirds in the past two rounds. He's starting to pick it up a little bit. Just a Chad Reed and, and Fonseca's right. You got Sean Hamlin who clocked in at the third fastest. The only three guys in the 59 second range was Carmichael Reed and, and Sean Hamlin. You got Ryan Clark. There's our helmet camera on top of him. And they're all over to the other side of that Supercross logo there. And inside that booth is where they drop the gate. As we take a look at the Nissan starting grid, Reed, Fonseca, Wade, Johnson, Clark, Hamlin, and Light on the board is sideways. This is heat number one of the 250 class. Chad Reed gets a great jump. He's got people on the outside coming into number 39, just dives in on the inside of him. What a great move. Sean Hamlin, 33, goes right into the lead. 
looks like the numbers on the back of his jersey are in camo. He's sporting a little different outfit this week. Gets up over that double. So does Chad Reed, even a little cleaner. These guys are already checking away from Fonseca back there going, gee. Well, looking at his jersey, you really can't tell what number it is on the back, but that is double threes. Sean Hamlin, the man baby with the most stylish helmet out there. Hamlin, number 33, the Suzuki RM250 Team Sobe Suzuki, riding from Michelin, 20 years of age, a fourth year pro. Little mistake right there, and he hands it to Chad Reed. All it takes is one little bobble. Just like that. And you got company. If, if Carmichael was in this heat in the same position Chad was, yep. he'd have made the same pass. You cannot afford mistakes, but still a pretty good ride for Hamlin so far. He can check out what Reed's doing. He won his heat last week. And Ricky fell and made it a little easier on him, but still, I think Hamlin started Here. to join the party a little bit. Lower pass one more time as Hamlin's making a charge back on Reed. Here came he is. Up, yeah, he came up short and he got up into that loose stuff and it ruined his rhythm down the next straightaway. Reed busted out that triple through the middle, which is something new. Worked perfect for the lead. Up over that double after the whoop. Well, during practice, Sean Hamlin has been shadowing Chad Reed and Ricky Carmichael. So is it a matter of figuring out their line, or is it just trying to ride at their pace? It's the pace. You know, the lines can change slightly. While we're talking about that, Nick Way made a beautiful pass over the double after the whoop on Fonseca for third. The hometown boy feeling it. A little ways back from these guys. You see him popping into the picture back there. But for Sean, still hanging with Chad. It's a rhythm thing. It's just getting used to riding the pace. It's so fast, your mechanic has to remind you to breathe on the pit floor. <laughs> Nick Way and Ernesto Fonseca. Way has the hometown behind him out of DeWitt, Michigan, 100 miles west of Detroit, as we're in Pontiac right now. So a lot of folks turn out to see him. Nick Way, he's got to do something that's kind of an honor. he got to ride a hot lap with our leaders, Ricky Carmichael and Chad Reed. A little extra motivation there. Right now, he's got Ernesto Fonseca behind him. Sean Hamlin in front of him, and man, they're all chasing number 22, Chad Reed. It looks like on the back of Chad's jersey, he's got something. Is it stuck on there? His 22 is an American flag, so the riders doing all they can to show a little something for the troops over there. We're going to step aside, but when we come back to Pontiac, Michigan, we will have the conclusion of 250, heat number one, right after this. The THQ World Supercross GP and the AMA Supercross Series is being brought to you. Nick Way continues to hold down third. Ernesto Fonseca in fourth. Our leader, number 22, Chad Reed out in front. Sean Hamlin, who got the whole shot, sits in second right now. This is 250, heat number one from Pontiac, Michigan, and the Silverdome. So the last lap by Reed and Hamlin, 102. And that's the triple that they weren't allowed to do. That, just that triple right there is four seconds difference in the lap time. And the, the practice right now, as Reed continues to dial in that whoop section, the practice that Nick Way is getting right now and the pressure is perfect for the main event. Because you're not just going to run away with things. You're going to have pressure like this all the time. And this is great. So far, he's been able to, to deal with it, no problem. Plus, in the next heat, there's Ricky Carmichael, Heat Boss, Larry Ward, Greg Snell, Clark Styles. If they all make it the main event, it's going to make it very interesting. So, as you pointed out, a great opportunity for him to log some very hot and actual laps when he'll be seen in the main event. You know, Chad Reed is still out in front of everybody. Trying to turn quick laps. He just dropped it back down to 59 and a half. Wants to have the fastest heat just to... Could bother Carmichael a little bit. Let him know, hey, the speed is still there. This is 250 heat number one from Pontiac, Michigan. We are inside the Silverdome, and our leader continues to be Chad Reed and Ernesto Fonseca trying to get that third place back and does so. That was pretty sneaky. Kind of kind of saw it coming. He set it up clear back in that right-hander as they came into the start. He got way over to the right so he could just cross over the line, get to the inside of Nick Way. Well, Ernesto Fonseca has plenty of experience. He's a rider. He's won a 125 East and West Supercross title. So resilient certainly the word here, and this is a beautiful pass. Yeah, he just came from out wide and was able to just duck right underneath. Nick knew it. Uh, just did a good job to hold him off for that long. He needs to stay with him and let him know that he's not just going to roll over and let him have it. White flag is out for your leader. From Australia, number 22, the man who sits in second place overall in the points league, Chad Reed, absolutely muscling that bike around. And he looks good. And he 
watch he and Carmichael, even if they're running the same lap time, you know, just Reed just looks a little bit more fluid doing it. We're on board with Ryan Clark. Come Ryan the Clark, team. the team solitaire Yamaha ride, one of the top privateers, him and, and Johnson are the two top privateers right now. We'll keep our eye on them. They're trying to qualify. Remember, we're only taking the top four, five through 20, have to go to semi number one. And everyone right now seems to be chasing double deuce. Chad Reed just absolutely smoked it at first after Sean Hamlin got the whole shot. Chad Reed took over and said, no worries, mate. I'll carry it the rest of the way. We got number 22 in the lead, number 33 in second. We need a number 44 out there. <laughs> Here As he Chad. makes one more turn, your winner from heat number one, Chad Reed picks up the victory. And I'm certain that number four was watching that. Ricky Carmichael wanted to keep abreast of what his chief competitor and chief rival is doing. And uh, Chad Reed, I don't know, maybe the golf paid off this week, David. He looked awfully, awfully uh, comfortable out there. Don't on let that him Yamaha. kid you. Don't let him kid you. He's, he's doing plenty of riding during the week. But to unwind, I'm sure he goes out and does some golf as Ryan Clark works his way to the finish. Meanwhile, Clark and Johnson both will have to make it to the main event by virtue of a semifinal because they did not qualify in the top fours. We take a look at our Honda Heat 1 official results from Pontiac, Michigan. Your winner in Heat 1 is Chad Reed on board as Yamaha Sean Hamlet. A great race on the Suzuki gets second. Ernesto Fonseca's Honda checks in at third. Nick Way and the Yamaha go fourth. So the local boy makes good. He'll be in the main event for sure. Right now, let's send it down to Cameron Steele. Well, I'd say winning's getting pretty comfortable for Chad Reed. Chad, two in a row coming into the race. Are you feeling like three is possible? Yeah, Cameron, I, I feel good out here tonight. Uh, you know, I have a bit of a slip up out there, though somebody went down in the triple. I wasn't able to triple, so, uh, you know, it seems like each week you're going for uh, fastest lap times and uh, fastest heat race, and that's definitely going to hurt. But, you know, I had a good race, and bike's running awesome, so, uh, you know, get a good start to me. To me, all I can do is, uh, you know, enjoy myself, have fun. And uh, do what, you know, all the guys, Yamaha, Thor, Pasta Lemon, Bridgestone, Scott, do what those guys pay me to do and just try and win races. Well, while you're having fun, we're having a great time watching you. We'll see you in the main event. Yeah, hopefully, Darren. Yeah. Bye-bye. If you can't make it to a Supercross race, the next best thing is the live race coverage on SXGP.com. It all starts right here in this booth, and they bring it to your home computer. After four years, while well, we have a dedicated team of uh, Chad Damiani, Jim Polly, and our Atkins in the floor, a special producer uh, and engineer, Alan Stell, uh, that everybody mixes everything together and produces a great show. Last week, we actually had Jeremy McGrath on the air with us, and you could submit questions to him via internet, or you could actually call in and ask questions and talk with Jeremy. And sometimes we have special callers like um, Bob Hanna's actually called in to talk to us and because Jim Holly knows everybody in racing. We've got guys in here from France and Australia, their families and their friends are listening, uh, and it, it really is a fantastic service in that way. Plus, in the, the webcast, you got to understand this, that uh, they average around 25 to 35,000 listeners of uh, uh, an event, and it's growing every, every week. They average about 50 minutes to 60 minutes an hour of listening time per listener. That's the excitement of uh, SXGP.com, is because it's happening live all around the world. 250, heat number two from the Silver Dome in Pontiac, Michigan. Ricky Carmichael sliding back into the orange. Last week he tried the blue, got second. For most people that'd be plenty, but for Ricky, he's the first loser. So he's back to the superstitious orange. Mike Gosler there talking to him. We'll see if Goose can get him back in front of there. Ricky doing his part being patriotic. He's got the American flag on there. We saw Chad Reed sporting on the back of his jersey. The first two was the Australian flag. The second was the American flag. As we take a look at the THQ starting grid, Carmichael Voss, Ward, Snell, Styles, Demuth Evans, Neil, Wilson, Pavoni, and the rest of the crew here. Matt next to Derek Rose. Matthew Maximoff on the far outside, number 200. Gave himself a few spots over to the next guy over to his left. Just he can take all the room he needs. Check out the helmet of Heath Voss. Pretty cool. He's got an Uncle Sam back there. Talked a little about that last week. His helmet guy gave him some ideas and said exactly what I want. He's got Uncle Sam on the back as the 30 board is sideways. This is heat number two from Pontiac, Michigan. Ricky 
Carmichael, the tremendous start, goes out to the front. Can he hold the line? Carmichael goes in tight, has everyone on his back wheel, and it's Carmichael, but on the inside, look at that. What a great move by Heat Boss. Maximoff from the far outside, number 200, comes out in good shape. That was a good move to move out a little bit. Himself plenty of room. He messed up the whoops a little bit, gave it up to Larry Ward, but a great start. Carmichael tripling right out. It's a pretty good lead over Styles and Ward. Those guys are getting great starts. Model Triple Triple X team has got the, the beginning of the race is dialed in. If they can stay up there, really get some great results. Clark Styles, who we've seen get whole shots before, number 47 on the Honda 250 team, Moto Triple X Yoshimura Honda out of Athens, Alabama. 27 years of age, had an impressive eighth place finish in Houston. Here it is again, Carmichael on the right-hand side. It looks like he's got this thing closed down. Now yeah, he did a beautiful job of getting there first and being able to hold the inside. If you look at Heath Boss, now they just went out of our picture, but Heath Boss tried to tuck it around the inside, and he looked like he might have had a pass there, but he got sideways and gave up a few spots. So Ricky Carmichael leads him into the green flag lap, and folks, I hate to say it, but he's all but checked out, except for Clark Styles and Larry Ward to reel him back in. After Houston, Ricky said, I would like to win the rest of the races. I just need to get good starts and stay out of trouble, and I think that's the product for him. Right there, he has a little bit of a stumble, but Ricky Ward is you know, nearly 100 yards up on his next competitor, which is Clark Style. Larry Ward currently sits in third place. Larry Ward catching fire now. Last half of the Supercross season, getting more and more used to that 450 Honda, getting good starts, playing up to the crowd. It's great to have him out there. Boss recovered from that second corner, a little slide out. And he'll be directly in the main. He has no pressure from fifth place and he'd like to make up a spot or two if he can he's trying to keep in contact with ward and styles carmichael is just gone <laughs> first lap of 59.4 and used to take that down to a 58.6 to match reese well this is the place where barry sanders and the detroit lions of the nfl used to play and you can say right now ricky carmichael just ran the ball back 100 yards and no one's even near him we're going to step aside, but when we return to Pontiac, Michigan, we'll have the conclusion of heat number two in the 250 class, plus the Thor Rider profile. Stay with us. Welcome back to Pontiac, Michigan. This is heat number two in the 250 class. And no surprise, number four, Ricky Carmichael out in front. Nice move down to the inside of his teammate. He's like, yeah, I'm tired of having pressure from Boss. I'm getting out of here. And that's, that's three, four, 50. A lot of horsepower and a lot of noise. The four strokers are having their own little battle right now. Heath Boss continues to sit in fourth, and this time he's trying to track down Clark Styles. Larry Ward trying to check out, get away from that action. Look at the roots coming off those guys. They make their way into that left-hand turn. Last lap by Carmichael, a 103. So just a little bit slower than the, the, the lap that Chad Reed in the first he had to roll the triple. Ricky still but in, not able to match. The lap time of uh, Chad Reed in the first heat. He was faster yesterday, he was faster this afternoon in practice, but so far this evening he hasn't been able to match Chad's speed. It would seem like it, though. I mean, if you're right. in the crowd not looking at a watch, you're thinking, geez, Carmichael's the fastest thing I've ever seen. These guys are having a great battle. Carmichael, he's already on the finish line jump. How much of it is concern for Ricky to get the fastest lap time? I know it comes through a lot of choice, but... Uh, for Ricky right now, do you think he's just doing some examination of the course, finding some new areas, new angles? Yeah, I mean, last week, he was, uh, or actually, uh, going back to St. Louis, he was struggling in the whoops in the heat race. He came out, and he, he said in his interview, he goes, I have one spot on the track I need to work on, and, and uh, I know how to fix that. So, you know, they make changes. Nice move by Boss. They Boss make changes the third. after the heat to uh, get things better. But, it, you know, I don't know. How would you feel, Todd? I mean, if you're trying to go into the main event and win, your toughest competitor just beat you in overall time and had a faster lap. It's tough to sit there with confidence. Right. But Ricky's able to usually get past that, and uh, Reed is proving he can too. So it looks like we're in for another great battle tonight. Heath Boss sitting in third moments ago, though he was having his struggles before he made that pass, past Clark Styles. So it's Carmichael, Ford, and Boss, one, two, and three. Styles is still in a transfer position. But he's got to be wary of number 64, Tyler Evans, who's coming up fast on him. 
Not much farther to go right now. Ricky coming over the triple, heading into the whoops. Since the white flag is already out for him, the rest of the field just making their way around. Look at this double. It's over it clean that time, but listen to the acceleration. Right out of that corner, you got about a 12-foot run to jump 35 feet over a triple, and if you miss it, you're going down. The, the nerve these guys have and the confidence they have in themselves and their bikes is amazing. Well, I've said it before, I'll say it again. Pound for pound, he may be the most talented supercross rider out there. He does things in practice that, I mean, just quite literally blows your mind. And the way he's able to recover and the way he's able to just will himself to winning is just amazing. Your winner, heat number two, Mr. Carmichael, RC. So he sets the stage for a great battle with Chad Reed. Got a hand on the hip, like, man, I think I can do better than that. What the heck is wrong with me? He, he's striving for, for, for perfection every time he's out there. So if it's what looks great to us, isn't always good enough for him, but that's good. That's what makes him so dominant. He's expecting the very most he's got to give every time he hits the track. This is Clark Stiles coming around. For a while there, he had a nice second place position. He'll settle for fourth, and he is our last transfer position. As we take a look at the Suzuki Heat 2 official results, Ricky Carmichael is your winner, followed by Larry Ward. Heath Boss in third, Clark Styles in fourth, and Josh Demuth moves up to fifth, but he'll still have to go to semi number two. And with that, let's send it down to Cameron Steele, who's with Ricky Carmichael. Well, guys, with a disappearing act like that, he could probably get a second job in Vegas as a magician. Ricky Carmichael, you're not supposed to get the whole shot against those big 450s. Ah, uh, the Honda's working good tonight. You know, I've been concentrating on my starts and uh, trying to get up there first and eliminate myself from the problems I've been having. Uh, everything is good tonight. I feel really, really comfortable, and uh, I'm going to go out and do the best I can. Looking forward to seeing you in the main. Ah, uh, thanks. All right, thank you, Cameron. It's time now for our Thor Rider Profile. Well, it's that time in the year again when riders are getting injured left and right. But on the other hand, it's a good thing for riders like Danny Smith, Sean Hamlin. They get to step it up onto the 250 and, well, four starts, four top tens. Four starts and three top tens for you, Danny. Things are going well for Suzuki on, on this end. How's it going, Danny, so far? I think you guys are both surprising a lot of people. Yeah, you know, our, our uh, Suzuki RM250 is really, really easy to ride for us. To me, that's the easiest transition because uh, I got on the bike and was able to ride well. And uh, I get good starts and um, I'm just riding hard and having fun and uh, trying to do what I can for Sobe. My style maybe suits 250 a little bit better. I don't really have the size for it yet, but that's where my, I want my career to go. So it's good to have this opportunity. Now, Sean. You were basically a no-name until this year, and Roger DeCoster discovered you in the Outdoor Nationals, and you blew a lot of people's minds. Now here you are running the top 10 in the 250 class. What has this year been like for you? It's been good, you know, uh, my first full, you know, Supercross series. I, uh, I'm showing strong results on the 250, and hopefully that I can uh, move into the top 10 before the year's done with. It's pretty cool that you're running on Travis Pastrana's bike. It's putting it to good use. Of course, Travis is out with an injury this year. But I think, like I told Danny, you guys are surprising a lot of people. And I think with Roger, there's no pressure over here because you guys are 125 riders. Yeah, definitely. You know, uh, being able to ride Travis's bike is definitely uh, an honor. And we just go on every weekend and, you know, keep getting better and better results. And hopefully this weekend tonight, we can uh, put him up on the podium. It's time now for our Honda flashback. Last year's 250 main at Pontiac started like any other, but would soon turn into the best race of the season. Ricky Carmichael moved in second, but suffered a horrible crash just a few laps into the race. Unbelievably, he would work his way back to the front and attack Nathan Ramsey for the lead. 20 laps would not be enough, however, as Nathan took the CRF 450 to its first ever win. Carmichael finishing in second and Jeremy McGrath in third. If you can, please join us in person for the THQ World Supercross GP and the AMA Supercross Series. Upcoming events include Salt Lake City, Utah, April 26th at Rice Eccles Stadium. And we wrap things up in Las Vegas, Nevada, May 3rd at Sam Boyd Stadium. For more information, log on to www.sxgp.com. Listen to Supercross Live on sxgp.com. We'll be back with the main event from Pontiac, Michigan, right after this. Here 
are your qualifying highlights of the 250 class. We go back to semi number one. Johnson gets a great jump, but it was really a score of the top privateers. Johnson and Clark doing battle. All the subway riders. Jason Thomas with the lead, but look at number 35. Johnson goes to the inside, picks up the lead. Nice block pass. While he was enjoying his first ever lead in Supercross, our helmet cam, Ryan Clark, gets down to the inside, gets it done for third. A little later, he would pick up second as Keith Johnson styled his way to his first ever win in Supercross. Congratulations to him picking up the victory in semi one. And semi final number two, different story, but a lot of action, especially into that first corner. Watch number 204, DeHaan. Brut does a little squid number, falls down. Takes Mason with him, gets run over by the arena cross champ, DeMuth. And look at Evans on the left. All the way from third or fourth almost into the lead, given Greg Schnell a lesson through the whoops. Tyler Evans would go on to pick up the victory, throwing in a little love to his fallen buddy Chris Ackerman. And in the LCQ with only two riders advancing onto the main event, the pressure was really on, and Casey Lytle stepped up. Nice little jump into the hole shot. Brian Mason does a great job to work his way through the pack up into second. Couldn't catch Johnson. But they took over the top two spots, transferred to the main as the Racer X gas card battle really shaped up behind it. Finally went to DeHaan. Casey Lytle would go on to pick up the victory in the LCQ with Brian Mason behind him. DeHaan, as David said, picking up some valuable Racer X gas cards. As we take a look at the Nissan qualifying results, it's Lytle and Mason moving on to the main event. The 250 main event. Well, let's take a look at the Suzuki main event starting grid. Reed Carmichael, Sean Hamlin's in a good position. Then Larry Ward, Fonseca, Boss Way, Styles Johnson, Tyler Evans is in the big show. Clark Snell, Thomas DeMuth, Ala, Pavoni, Campbell, Wilson, Lytle, and of course, Brian Mason. The first 10 feet of this thing, Todd, the first 10 feet could tell the story right here. Well, Chad Reed, who says he's been playing golf all week, is looking good as the 30 board goes sideways. It's the 250 main event from Pontiac, Michigan, as the Silver Dome welcomes the world's best. Both Ricky and Chad got a terrible jump, and Look Chad gets through there somehow. Unbelievable. Chad got totally sandwiched and came out in the lead. Carmichael Sperry. And Sean Hamlin is just to his left. He picked up the SXGP.com hole shot. He squares it off, moves back into the front, but here comes Chad Reed. The thunder from down under, certainly it's cold outside, but he's put on the woolly jumper and he's heating things up. Chad, or Chad just unbelievable run through the woods. Sean Hamlin matched it, but his timing was off to get over that double at the end. And it's interesting, both the guys have decided to run a flag in the numbers on their jersey. They're running one and two. You saw a shot of Carmichael there buried in the pack, but he worked through pretty good. For Ricky right now, Ricky's currently sitting in sixth place. Good news is he's got two teammates in front of him with Larry Ward and Ernesto Fonseca, and they're just cheering on Chad Reed. The Yamaha fellas are saying, go, go, go. Fonseca sitting up in third, Ward ahead of, of Carmichael also right now. I don't think he's gonna get any resistance, Carmichael that is, from his teammate Fonseca, but he just had a little bit of a, he tried to make a move on Ward, he couldn't get it done, it slowed his progress up. Well, Larry Ward has that big thumper four stroke on that long straightaway. Ricky just couldn't get the run on him. He'll find out what happens when he gets to this whoop section. Carmichael able to double out of that rhythm buster. Here comes Fonseca, clears it, as does Boss. Carmichael moves ahead of Ward. So Carmichael now up to fifth position. Look at him one more time. Here it is. Carmichael trying to make something happen there with Ward. And he got a little sideways. He went into the first turn. It happened again, but he finally found his way through. Now. He's working on Boss. And we've got a rider down. Looks like Clark Styles later in the pack. Ricky Carmichael, however, has no concern for the yellow flag right now. He gets past another rider. Now, now he's got his teammate Fonseca ahead of him, and Ernesto needs to check over and watch his six right there and not mess up Ricky's progress and let Chad Reed have much more of a gap. Reed's already got a four-second lead almost over on Sean Hamblin. Well, this is a lot better than Ricky had last week. If you were with us, Ricky Carmichael went down in the first turn, was in dead last, tracked Chad Reed down, and I'll tell you what, he got to second, but not tonight. Chad just got, he really got a disadvantage a minute ago, and he rolled all that stuff before the triple. Comes Ricky trying to work on 
Ted had to roll all that stuff before the triple because he saw flags. Everybody else jumped through there and reeled him in. You know that they're telling Fonseca to get out of the way. Well, Ernesto, I don't know if Ernesto knows Ricky's back there. Carmichael will like make it. his presence known real oh. soon, just like that. And Fonseca took a huge chance to make that pass. He jumped in there, landed sideways with the soft stuff. You can see Chad Reed getting away. He would be farther away if he didn't get kind of messed up on those yellow flags. So this is how it goes, folks. Ricky Carmichael, not the best start, was back in seventh position, got into sixth quickly. Now he's in third. So it's Chad Reed, Hamlin, and Carmichael. who watch the pass one more time on his teammate, Ernesto Fonseca. Watch him jump in here. Look at that. Oh, jumps right into that off camber. He could have easily had that front end wash out and go down right there, but we see it all the time from Ricky. You know, he just takes these huge chances, and most of the time, it pays off. I wouldn't want to be in his shoes through all that. My heart would be popping out of my chest. Ricky Carmichael's last lap, three tenths faster than Hamlet. So it's Carmichael, number four, on board the Honda, trying to track down number 33, Sean Hamlin on the Suzuki, who is trying to track down our leader, number 22, Chad Reed on the Yamaha. They go one, two, and three in this 250 main event for the Silver Dome in Pontiac, Michigan. Hamlet cannot get that section wired consistently. He keeps messing up right there. He just gave up some time. Ricky reeled him in about five bike lengths. Here it is. Ricky Carmichael really closing on Hamlet. Chad Reed is out of the way. The folks at Honda are just clapping. They look at Ricky and they just start clapping. He knows what to do. He's such a strong rider. And in these situations, David, is there anyone better? Well, we're seeing a guy that's a little bit better at it right now. Chad Reed. I, I am not believing it. Now, so, Hamlet blows the double and there goes Ricky. So now, Carmichael has got Reed in his sights. About a four second gap, three and a half seconds about. And it's what we've been wanting to see. Can Ricky reel him in? He made an incredible charge here last year from last with his visor hanging in his face, no front brake. The bike was bent all the way up to finish second. I wonder if that same thing will happen this time. Get all the way up there, but not have enough. Here's another look at the Once again, on it was the rhythm buster that really told the tail. Carmichael number four on the right, Hamlin number 33 on the left, and there it is. Yeah, the right side is better. For, for one thing, you can't get past. It's for two, you can block past the guy at the end. And three, that little three-foot wall there they jumped that gap with isn't as steep. So Hamlin needs to change his line. That'll make things a lot easier. You'll probably see that this time following Ricky through there. Chad Reed continues to lead number 22 oh, Ricky, behind Ricky, him. Ricky. Ricky's got problems. Well, he got it down to a six-second lead for Reed, and then he got problems with that whoop section. The first time he struggled through there all night long, and Hamlin was right there to put the pressure on. So Chad Reed gets an extra second or two by virtue of that Carmichael mistake. It probably won't happen again. Oh, Hamlin can't do the triple. Oh, he still does the triple. Man, these bikes are so good. Watch Ricky. Gets about two more, and then bam, sideways. Anybody else, it's a crash. For sure, it's a crash. Ricky has got, he's like a cat. You know, he just, he just lands back on the bike, stays on the track, and gets it done again. It's unbelievable. The guys, resilient in situations like that. We'll be back to Pontiac, Michigan for more of the 250 main event after this short break. Welcome back to Pontiac, Michigan in the Silver Dome. We're in the midst of a 250 main. Your leader, Chad Reed. What would it be if Fonseca finished in third? That would be the third week in a row it went Reed, Carmichael, Fonseca on the podium. Right now, your leader, the Thunder from down under, Chad Reed. On the back of his jersey, the first number two has the Australian flag, and the second has the American flag. Chad Reed is cool without even trying. Yeah, he is pretty slick. You know, he's, he's, he's great at the head game. You know, he, he's good at pushing people's buttons. Great play. Remind the folks at home that Chad Reed is a rookie on the 250 circuit after last year picking up the 125 East title. As the battle for third continues, Ernesto Fonseca is in fourth, number 24, Sean Hamlin, number 33, on the Suzuki. This could be his problem right here. Hamlin hasn't been able to get over that double consistent enough. Fonseca weighing about 135 or 40 pounds soaking wet on a very quick Honda is able to clear that gap pretty consistent. That might be the spot. If, if I was Fonseca, I'd get myself close enough and go for the pass right there. Everywhere else, Hamlin's holding pretty steady. Meanwhile, Ricky Carmichael continues to try to move up 
move on Chad Reed, his last lap a half a second faster than Reed. You do the math with 10 laps to go. That's going to get him pretty close, but I don't know if he's going to be close enough to catch Chad. Well, they're going to get into lappers here in about another lap or two. And, you know, we've heard these guys talk about it. I've said it plenty of times. When the leader catches the lap riders, although they do a great job with the blue flag, saying, hey, the leaders are coming, move over a little bit. It seems to bite the guy in the lead a little because they just it's unexpected and when the second place comes around they're already looking for you and they get completely out of your way. Sean Hamlin, number 33, as he goes through this difficult book section trying to keep the bike straight like an yeah, Aboriginal car. That. And that time he didn't do it. This time 24 months is right there. But it's like I said, if Fonseca keeps himself close enough at the entrance of that whoop section, that's his path right there. Sean Hamlin's best result, a seventh in Atlanta, and Ernesto Fonseca wants back on the podium. He's been in third the last two weeks. Will he make it three in a row? Sean Hamlin, who's been riding great. With correction, Sean Hamlin got a fifth in Indy, so he did get better than that seventh. Whoa, Fonseca showing that red fender going, man. You better be slick getting into these corners or it's over. Meanwhile, up in front, number 22, Chad Reed, is now encountering that lap track that you talked about. He takes that far right side, so no one else seems to be going there, and he had a clean run at that whoop section, but Ricky Carmichael has made up a little bit of time. Just a, a few tenths of a second. Casey Lytle now the next one to be passed by Chad Reed. Did a good job of letting him have the outside line. Ricky Carmichael comes around. But I think you have a good point with those lap riders. Until they see that blue flag, they're not going to back down. Fonseca gets the job done. He is now in third place. So Fonseca's three. Carmichael second. Chad Reed in first. I was looking out the live action and missed that pass. Fonseca put on Hamlin, but... I think it was in the area I've been talking about. Here's another look at it. Watch it. Going into the whoop section. Fonseca's close enough. Yep, that's exactly where. Able to jump that gap. He kind of had the pass made already, but that was the problem for Hamlin. I think uh, Fonseca is the benefactor of being over at Team Honda and having Carmichael doing yeah. a little bit of the work setting the bike up for, for sections like that. Here goes Reed up and over, no problem. His lead is shrinking a tenth at a time, but got enough time. Chad knows, he knew last week in Houston, he's going, all right, yeah, I know Carmichael's catching me, but there's only this many laps left, and the race is catching me, I'm fine. I think he thinks he's fine again this time, but one mistake, and we're going to see a real race to the end. We'll step aside briefly when we return to Pontiac, Michigan in the Silver Dome. We'll find out if Ricky Carmichael can reel in the thunder from down under. Chad Reed continues to lead. We'll be back after this. Welcome back to Pontiac, Michigan. We are inside the Silver Dome. This is the 250 main. Chad Reed is your leader, but Ricky Carmichael is closing in fast. Losing a little more time to Carmichael, but not enough. I don't think Ricky can be inspired yeah. enough. It's going to be close, almost a duplicate of last week in Houston. In between them, number 40, James Foley Jr. is a lap rider. Ricky will make quick dispatch of him. But I think you're right, David, with just those four laps to go, if you take a look at the Honda stopwatch, there's the gap. Carmichael. Oh, yeah, yeah. Just, if we can stay on Carmichael for a second, just watch how on the edge this kid is. I've seen several times where he's just pushing it so hard, it can't be pushed any harder. All the way on the power, all the power he can get. This is the corner where he's had a couple of close calls sticking his front wheel up into that loose stuff. Speed up. Power on. Ricky is riding as fast as you can ride a motorcycle right now. And he's only gaining a, a half a bike length at a time on Chad Reed. I mean, you got to be patient and realize, hey, you can't win them all, but Ricky usually does. So this has got to be hard for him to digest. Well, it's a little maturation process to let the rookie come in and get possibly three wins in a row on you, which is not going to set out well for Ricky, but let's remember the overall pitcher. He's still picking up points. He gets closer to Las Vegas, and the title's closer to being his. And it's getting closer. Chad Reed now in serious lap traffic. Got through them all. Now Ricky's got to get by all those guys. And two of them are on Yamaha. And I wonder if they don't just make it a little tougher on him. Nick Way about to be lapped by Ricky. Well, this has been a great race. The way it goes down, the way Chad Reed got to that pile up to start, and the way Ricky has battled back and made it so exciting to watch. Look at all that blue. 
got to think Ricky worries about that just a little bit. Nick Way gets out of the way. That's nice. Nice of him to do. Not an interference. And now Ryan Clark gets out of the way a little bit. Coming down the starting line. There's your gap. We're looking at a very small gap, but again, like in Houston, Ricky might just run out of a little real estate. David, can he push that bike? I mean, that Honda is a fine-tuned machine. It's like a Stradivarius. Can he push it any farther than he already has? I don't think so. Look at him. I mean, he's just... Everything that thing has got, he's given it. And, you know, close calls for Ricky. I mean, and shoot, he's been doing that for his whole career. You know, all... You know, where he just barely right. stays with it. And, uh, man, he, he's perfected that. You know, it, it looks a lot different compared to the, all the years Jeremy dominated. He was so smooth. Chad Reed looking quite a bit like that. Uh, well, we're going to see Chad Reed have to turn it up just a little bit. Keep Ricky off his tail. Next time around, I believe they're going to get the white flag. Ricky's realizing, okay, it's now or never. Well, Chad Reed give him a lot of credit. I think earlier in the season, Chad Reed might have made some mistakes, got a little rattled knowing that Ricky was back there. He has certainly matured into an awesome rider. I mean, we knew that with him coming out of the 125 East last year with the title. But as a rookie in the 250, he has rode superbly. And Ricky Carmichael making up just a little bit of ground. See that little closer. bit of how Ricky gets up into that corner, skids yep. the back end up in there, sort of stops for a moment, a little pause, and then gets back on the gas. That's where he, and a lot of people talk about Ricky's corner speed. You know, he goes in hard, he comes out hard, but through the apex of the corner, I think Chad's a little bit better. That's why Ricky is an Oh, and Ricky made a little mistake right there. Just, that might be it. Light bobble. That might be all that Chad needed. White flag. The white flag is out. This is the main event in the 250. Chad Reed continues to lead. Ricky Carmichael runs in second. And this is going to be a great last lap. Very similar to Houston, David. And I think Ricky's starting to realize, I'm running out of time here. I'm running well, out of real estate. There is one big difference from here in Houston. Yeah, Chad got out to, he was ahead of Ricky, but Ricky was not last. And he, he was quite a bit faster than Chad in Houston. He was able to reel him in. And I think Ricky just realized yeah. he couldn't clear the gap after the whoops, and it's over. And he, he had Rick, uh, Chad in his sights early on, could not make it up. Chad beat Ricky Carmichael tonight, and boy, that's the third one in a row. And he didn't luck into it, as some people might have thought, and the other two with Ricky going down. He flat out beat Carmichael, and it's on, folks. Hi, my thumbnail's gone. Well, I think Dave Dice Pitford says it all. It says, wow, for the winner of the 250 main. And it's an amazing way to finish. You usually get a huge whip from him. Not tonight. He gets hung up just a little bit. And Chad Reed wins for the third event in a row. He gives a wave over to Ricky. Ricky responds. He's going to be upset. But let's remember, a second place still gets in the points. He's trying for the title. But I know Ricky, he considers second place the first loser. We'll be back to Pontiac, Michigan with official results and interviews with our winner right after this short break. And scooters. Welcome back inside the Silver Dome in Pontiac, Michigan as we take a look at the Honda final standings in the 250 main event. Chad Reed is your winner three weeks in a row. He holds off a hard charging Ricky Carmichael on board the Honda. Ernesto Fonseca gets on the podium in third. Then Sean Hamlin and Heath Foss. Right now, let's send it down to Cameron. Well, the champ here in Pontiac, Australia is Chad Reed. Chad said you wanted to beat Ricky without him falling. Tonight, you did it. Yeah, Cameron, you know, this is by far the best, uh, you know, best feeling race because there's always, you know, predictions that he went down and that's why I win. And, you know, I made a few little mistakes, but, you know, everybody made mistakes in this track. It was so dry and, and slippery. And, you know, I just did what I do during the week, you know, just ride off the pit board. And, you know, I kind of controlled the race from where I was. You know, I, I could see where he was. And when he came close, I stepped it up. And when he, you know, dropped back, I just concentrated and put my lines together. And, you know, uh, my girlfriend, Ellie, told me, uh, don't always the fastest guy wins, the smartest guy wins. And, you know, I, I hit the ground a lot this year, but, you know, it's slowly paying off, you know, you can hit it so much, and, you know, I'm just, I'm pumped. Right on, well, he's stoked, he's thinking about winning, and he's winning, things are good, Chad Reed, number one once again. 
All right, thank you very much, Cameron. As we take a look at the Honda Series standings, Ricky Carmichael out in front, but his lead continues to dwindle over Chad Reed, who picks up his third victory in a row. Right now, let's send it back down to Cameron, who's with a very disappointed Ricky Carmichael. Well, for the last few races, Ricky Carmichael spent a little bit of time on the ground, coming in second tonight at second place with no crash. Ricky, I want to ask you, what happened? Oh, you know, I, I got a okay start and just didn't have enough speed to reel Chad in. You know, I caught him towards the end there and uh, just didn't have enough. You know, uh, he rode good and uh, no worries. You know, I'm still uh, looking for the championship here and uh, it sucks to get beat, but, uh, you know, I need to probably get a little faster. Right on, congratulations, Ricky, a good finish. I know he hates it, but hey, second place is better than third place. All right, thank you, Cameron. As we take a look at the THQ World Supercross GP standings, it is Chad Reed out in front, Villeman and Ferry. Voss sits in fourth place. So on behalf of the hardworking folks in the truck who bring you the pictures, Jamie Little and Cameron Steele down on the field, and the champ up with me in the booth, David Bailey, I'm Todd Harris saying good night from Pontiac, Michigan, and the Silver Dome as Chad Reed gets his third event win in a row. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports.